I recently found an epic pile of trashed furniture out of the curb and I'm pretty sure that I can fix up two of the three dressers that I scooped up but this one is missing a bottom drawer and a few of the other ones are completely smashed so instead of trying to make the missing drawer into some sort of awkward out of place shelf situation I thought I'd be better off to write this one off completely and just deconstruct it for parts. I do have a bit of a loose plan to make something out of the cool curved top, so stay tuned for that because hopefully it will work out. This thing has a ton of really useful pieces that I know will be able to put onto other trashed furniture flips like the matching chest of drawers for this dresser. My whole business is based around reusing and recycling, so here we go. I think I'm going to stop here because I need a workbench and I think that I can use this frame section as a jumping off point. I'm imagining raising it up a little bit, adding these casters and a salvaged top from something else, but that's a project for another day. Here is my parts haul off of this dresser. These mid-mod handles are beautiful and worth probably between $60 and $80. I have a pile of number eight Robertson screws, probably worth about $6 at the hardware store. Four solid wood tapered legs and their mounting plates would likely run me about 50 bucks at Home Depot. These nylon drawer glides need a really good scrub, but they're three or $4 a piece new. And I have three wooden drawer glides that weren't broken and they're kind of priceless because I need them for the matching chest of drawers to this dresser and they're already the perfect size. I've got five new drawer bottoms and a stack of scrap lumber and drawer fronts that I can use for a ton of different stuff. I think the hardboard backer is going to have to go to scrap because it's pretty smoky smelling. And best of all, I have this top and I'm going to turn it into an incredible console table. This laminate top with some cool new hairpin legs is going to be the perfect surface for that, right? First, I need to fix it up and make it look cute. Of course, it needs a really good clean and it looks like I need to reattach the top board to the frame at the back. Mm -hmm. 
I squeezed some wood glue in between the laminate and the frame and clamped that up, but then I decided I should probably secure that a little bit more with some brad nails. Once the glue was dry, I filled in all those nail holes with some wood filler. And then once that dried, I sanded it smooth and gave the rest of the top a little bit of a scuff up and then dusted that off with a microfiber cloth. Now I have scuff sanded this slick laminate, but I just have a gut feeling that it needs a little extra bonding action before I start painting. So I'm going to use up the rest of this shellac base primer that I have in the can before it dries out on me. The cost of this primer has gone way up over the last few months. So I wouldn't go out and buy it just for a project like this. You could use any adhesion primer for this. I'm just using what I've got on hand. I'm actually planning on painting this laminate top to look and feel like oak. And I think I've figured out a really cool technique for it. The first thing I need is to mix up a base color. Again, I'm just using what I've got on hand. You could find or make a similar color with whatever your favorite paint is. I'm using fusion mineral paint in putty with a little bit of mustard to warm it up. Once I got those two colors combined, I still wasn't feeling the shade, so I added a little bit of coral to bring in some pink tones. And now I'm just gonna brush this over the whole top. You definitely want to apply a liberal layer of paint, not slopping it on, but also a little bit more paint than I would usually use for a first coat. And I'm working really quickly here because I'm gonna be using this graining tool to add some texture. I'm gonna use all three surfaces on the grading tool to create some wood grain by dragging it through the wet paint. This does not have to be perfect, but you do wanna keep everything moving in the same direction, just like natural wood grain would be. And it's gonna look really cheesy at this point. That is totally okay. You just sort of have to trust the process. We've gotta go through a few layers here. I let that first coat of texture dry for two hours and now I'm just brushing on a regular coat of paint to fill in the color but you can totally still see all that really cool 3D graining that I created. My second coat of paint was dry in about an hour, so I went on to the third layer, or I guess it's the fourth layer if you count the primer. I am using some bare water-based stain in the color Golden Pecan. Pecan, pecan, pecan. <laughs> I'm brushing this on the same way in the direction of my wood grain, and once I had the whole surface covered, I just brushed back through one side to the other, creating more of that wood grain texture. Here's where things get cool and it starts to look like real wood. You need a floppy, fluffy brush for this. And I'm going to flog the stain. That's actually what this technique is called. Don't make fun of me, it's flogging. I'm loosely tapping the flat side of the bristles through the stain, still following the same wood grain direction. 
And this is going to sort of muddle the harsh lines in the stain and create the look of wood pores. I found that I have to always be pushing the brush away from myself because if I'm doing this in a motion coming towards myself, I can see all the vertical lines of the brush in the stain. But if I move away from myself, it all blends out really nicely. This also picks up a lot of the extra stain and I just kept wiping my brush off on my drop cloth to keep it as dry as I could. I ended up doing two passes of this flogging before I was happy with the way it looked and then I left it to dry one more time. About two hours later again, I came back with the same stain and I just added in some more depth by sort of randomly adding color here and there. I brushed on some long patches of color and then I dripped some little droplets and lightly brushed those out. I did my flogging over that layer again and one more time, we're gonna let it dry. It is already looking beautiful, but I wanna add a little more detail. So I mixed up a bit of an off-white glaze with some of Fusion's glaze medium and a dollop of that base putty color that I started with and about a tablespoon of water just to thin it out. If you had a white gel stain, you could use that. You can also grab this clear glazing medium at pretty much any paint store or even Michael's craft store. I brushed that on the same way as I did with my stain layers and then wiped off a little bit of the excess really lightly with a shop towel and then you guessed it, I flogged it to blend it in. I am so obsessed with this finish. Once my last layer was dry, I sealed it up with two coats of matte top coat, and then I flipped over the table and painted the bottom for a finished look. brought the table inside and laid it on a soft towel so that I could mark off the holes for the new legs. I drilled some pilot holes so that my screws didn't split the wood and got them all attached. And there we go. A trashed dresser lives on as a completely different piece of furniture and a donor for lots of future flips. I have been playing around and testing out a bunch of different versions of this and the golden pecan and white is going to get me this kind of bare oak, white oak look that I want for this table. But I did create a few other beautiful looks with some other color combos. Make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss out on the makeover of the matching chest of drawers. Have a great week and I will catch you all next time.